Hi everyone, if you're new here to the channel, my name is Ovi. I'm a third year medical student and welcome to Ovi Man. All right, so in this week's video, I'm gonna reflect a bit on my week that I had in emergency medicine. It's my very first week on my ED placement, ED rotation. I'm gonna tell you a bit about what I did, what I saw, how it went, and a bit about the specialty, about what is it like to be an emergency medicine physician. So what did I do? So most of the week, what I did, I stayed mostly in zone four because that's where I could do more things. Um, if you're not familiar with the zones and how it works in the ED, you can refer back to my last week's video, which I'm gonna link um, right here in the corner or down there in the description down below. Um, so yeah, I explained what is zone one, zone two, zone three, zone four. So I stayed mostly in zone four, which is like the minor emergency stuff. Um, and that's where I took like a handful of bloods. Um, I did histories, physical exams. I saw new patients. Um, that's where I spent most of my time because that's where I could actually do stuff. Um, not so much in the other zones. In zone one, I never did anything, almost did something. Uh, in zone two, um, I did went a little bit, uh, helped with like, you know, moving patients around, helped with uh, bandages. Um, I put in a few IV lines, um, which was nice. I expected to do some suturing, but I didn't suture anything because um, there's just too, way too much staff in that hospital. Well, there's no such, there's no such thing as too much staff, but there was like, a handful of doctors, like a lot of residents and then interns and then med students. So I didn't really do that much. Um, but yeah, it was still cool to like see things. And then I just went every single time I heard on the intercom that something interesting was happening. I was just observing in zone one and zone two. So in zone one, I saw like a handful of like pretty intense situations. So like I told you last week, I saw a handful of cardiac arrests. I saw a stroke, I saw trauma, I saw road traffic accident. Um, what else did I see? Like so sepsis, I saw overdose. I like, it was so many like crazy things going on. It was like really, really cool. And like the adrenaline rush that you get from it, especially that trauma case, that cardiac arrest case. Um, that I almost participated in. I mean, I was in, I was in the team. I almost did CPR, but I didn't. The patient came back to life. Um, anyways, I'm gonna talk about it later in the video, I think. Um, I have to look over at my script because I'm not really using it that much. Yeah, I thought I did suturing, didn't do suturing. Uh, yeah, I saw some pretty nasty lacerations. I have pretty big lacerations, like finger degloveement, like a like, bunch of things, burns I've seen. Um, so like the variety is there. Well, you never know what's gonna come through the doors, honestly, like you just never know. And I think that's something that's really quite exciting with emergency medicine, but more about that later on in the video. Okay, so what is emergency medicine? So emergency medicine, like the name suggests, is emergency medical cases acutely ill patients, urgent situations, so mainly, most of the time you're gonna be working in a hospital. You can work in some minor urgent centers. Um, you can work in primary care facilities, but mostly if you wanna get, you know, the big RTAs like road traffic accidents, cardiac arrest and everything, you're gonna be working at a big hospital with loads of resources loads of specialists and whatnot. Now, of course, you can work in a rural setting with like not as much resources and you get to do more stuff. Um, but yeah, as an emergency physician, you can pretty much work in any hospital, anywhere, like anywhere in the world, any hospital, anywhere. Literally, you can work anywhere. Because emergencies, guess what? They happen everywhere. So you can pretty much work anywhere as long as there's like a recess room or like a crash guard or things like that as long as you have like the minimum resources, which they all should have, right? If you're a hospital, you can pretty much work anywhere. Now, the way uh, work is organized in emergency, you might, you might already know that, but it's shift work. So shift work is that you clock in and you clock out. So it's oftentimes eight hour or 12 hour shifts. So let's say your shift might start at noon and it ends at 8 p.m. So you come in at noon, you clock in, you, you get the handover from the doctor who was there before you, 
and then you clock out at 8 p.m. Conversely, you can come in at 8 p.m. and then clock out at you know 8 a.m. the next morning, which is you know the next 12 hour shift, and then you can get an overlap from like 8 to like six, you know, something like that. And you get like different shifts working at different times, of course, because you need to get multiple doctors at the same time. So it's shift work. So one of the pros of that, because I did ask, I did ask a lot of questions, by the way, if you want to know which questions to ask, if you're doing like observership or shadowing, I'm going to make a video on that, or I already made it depending on when this is going to come out. So I might link it here or in the description below. Anyways, look out for that. Um, and one of the pros would be that if you get shift work, well, once you're done, you're done. You don't have any follow-ups. You don't have any patients to care about. Like you handed over all the patients, all the cases that you had to the next doctor who came in and that's it. It's not your responsibility anymore. You handed it over. Once you're done, you're done. One of the cons is that you're going to be working nights. Of course, it's unavoidable going to be working weekends, you're going to be working on birthdays, on holidays, you're going to be working at Christmas. If you're an emergency doc, the emergency needs to run 24 seven. People get hurt all the time. They don't get hurt only from nine to five. So that's one of the cons. So what about the scope of practice of an ED doc? So ED doctors, what they do is they deal with the acutely ill patients. But if you're working in a really big university hospital, you're going to have one page away, one call away, one of the specialists who are going to came in in literally two minutes to see the patients, depending on the you know severity of the situation. Right. So your scope of practice is sort of limited by when the specialists step in. So in a big university hospital, your scope is sort of um, more restricted to resuscitation and stabilization of patients, I would say. Whereas if you work in a rural hospital who doesn't have ready, like readily available specialists, then your scope of practice is way bigger. You get to dive in a bit deeper in every single specialty. Like if you get like a myocardial infarction, you would start right away the treatment. If you get like a stroke, you would do the whole workup. If you get like a fracture, you could like, you know, reduce it and things like that. Whereas in a big hospital, you would page the ortho and then they would come and do it themselves, you know, um, and things like that. So your scope of practice varies wildly depending on where you're working. So from one hospital to the next, you might have two completely different jobs. While of course, the essential is resuscitation and stabilization of patients. You can do a lot more depending on where you're working, right? So an ED doc would be sort of like a jack of all trades, master of resuscitation and stabilization of acutely unwell patients. So you're, you're sort of like diving one inch deep, but one mile wide in a way, whereas specialists, dive one mile deep and one inch wide. So you sort of know a little bit about everything, but you're a master of resuscitation and stabilization of patients because that's like your, your role basically as an ED doc to stabilize acutely unwell patients and then hand them over to the specialist and then you see the next patient and over and over again. So as an ED doc, uh, one of the challenges would be that you need to be able to deal with the uncertainty that comes with the job. So oftentimes you stabilize the patient, you give like a list of differentials and then you hand it over. But you never really know if what you did was right, if you had the right diagnostic or if the initial treatment was the best one. Like you're never really 100% sure and you're never 100% sure in medicine unless you're internal medicine you dig like like it becomes a rabbit hole honestly but yeah and and as an emergency physician you need to be okay with the uncertainty to know that you did everything that we that you could that the patient was stabilized at the best of your abilities and then you handed that over to the specialist of course sometimes you hear back but if you don't go out of your way to ask the specialists like, oh, how did I do? Was that all right? Did I have the right diagnostic? And then sort of like learn from that. Like, I guess that's a useful way to know if what you did was right or wrong and then learn from your mistakes if you did any or if it wasn't the right diagnostic. Um, but of course, you cannot do that for every single patient or it's never going to end. 
Like you just, you can't do that for every single patient. So that's the thing. You have this sort of uncertainty that you need to be able to handle and to deal with, to know that you did what you could, you did what you thought was right, and then they were handed over and then it is what it is. Like I said, it's not your responsibility anymore. They have been handed over, but it's still that uncertainty that you need to deal with knowing that, uh, or not knowing rather, if what you did what was like the right diagnostic or it wasn't. Now, another of the downsides that you get in working in the ED is that I'd say most of the cases are not really urgent and some of them are derived from the fact that people don't have primary care physicians. Now, this is not a video to critique like the healthcare system or whatnot um, because that's a whole other issue, but you, you need like to know that it's not always gonna be like Grey's Anatomy or like, you know, Chicago Men where like crazy things happening all the time. That would be, I guess, like 10% of the cases, whereas 90% of the time would be like not very acute stuff. Sometimes people just come like they want to refill. Sometimes you can get like drug addicts who like have drug seeking behavior. Um, you can get, you know, psychotic patients who are like really violent and put like your staff and yourself in danger. Like you're more, you're more at risk, let's say, than any other specialty because you never know what can come through the doors. And that is actually sort of a pro as well, because you don't have a routine. You're never gonna know what, like, what to expect. You're never gonna know, like you come in, you clock in for your shift, and you have no idea what can happen. You can have a cardiac arrest, you can have a trauma, or you can have 10 people who just have knee pain or back pain. Like you never know. You never know what can happen, right? You can have like a titus or like, you know, small, minor, urgent but not really urgent cases right that could be treated by a family physician but you know they don't want to wait like you know months or weeks to see a physician so they just come to the ed um yeah it's it, it's a huge variety you can see things from all the specialties you can get exacerbations from chronic health issues and then people present to the ed um yeah you can you never know what you're gonna get which is kind of exciting right because you don't have a routine. At least that's something that I think is a, is a pro. You never know what to expect. Then something else that I think is quite interesting about emergency medicine is the procedures that you get to do. So in terms of procedures, um, some of the procedures that you can do would be a uh, like suturing. That's a really, really common one. You see people coming in with lacerations and they need to get stitches. Well, that's the most common one, I guess. Um, you can do some more wacky ones, like you can do like chest drains, uh, you can do like thoracosynthesis, you can do like lumbar uh, taps, you can do like spinal taps, you can do dislocation reductions, fracture reductions, you can do like just so many things, you can do um, abscess drainage, like there's just so many procedures that you can do, which I think is quite interesting. It's sort of like a blend between like surgery and medicine, because you do need to know a lot about surgery and you do need to know a lot about medicine. Sort of like a mix between both uh, in terms of actual surgeries, like proper surgeries. Um, the only one that I'm aware of is if you have like a pregnant woman who's like really unstable and like the baby's heart stopped or something. Uh, I don't know like the exact like criteria that qualify for an emergency C-section, but you would do that because I think you only have four minutes before the fetus dies, like before the baby dies. Um, and then you would need to do the surgery right then and there. Like even if you page ob which you will do, of course, um, in a big hospital, it takes them more than four minutes to like run across the hospital. Let's say that they answer your page right away and that the run, they start running right away. It takes more than four minutes to like run across the hospital. So that's like one of the surgeries that I know that you can do or that you could do, right? If, you know, it was to happen. Um, yeah, you get loads and loads of procedures. So yeah, this week um, I did a bunch of things. Um, I think it's really nice. I like the environment. I love the specialty. I, I, I think as of now, that's my favorite specialty. And I'm quite interested in doing emergency medicine um, later on, you know, as a career. Uh, I think it's really cool. You get shift work. You can choose like which type of hospital you work at to see what kind of um, like you can choose your scope of practice, basically. Uh, you can choose your shifts. Of course, you can get night shifts, which yeah, we'll see in a few years how I do with those. Um, <laughs> and then 
yeah, loads of procedures. Um, it's really like a team sport. Uh, really, you really need to like, like working in a team and be able to work in a team. I would see myself working in a team. I would love to be like team leader in one of those cardiac rest cases. Um, yeah. So I really enjoyed my week, honestly. And I'm sort of sad that I only have one week left. Uh, it would have been cool to like have more. I even went on the weekends because um, there's less staff and there's more stuff to do. And I did a bit more stuff. That's when I, that's when I did stuff in zone two, which usually I don't really get to do because I'm always sent to like zone four uh, where there's like, you know, less doctors and more residents. Like it's almost run by residents, zone four type, type of thing. And then they just relate back to um, the doctors, to the consultants and attendings. Um, yeah, I don't know. It, it was really fun. I, I, I really enjoyed my experience. I really like emergency medicine. Um, I'm looking forward to my next week and I hope I'm going to see some more crazy things happening, uh, crazy exciting things. Um, of course, I don't wish that to patients, but I wish that for my own learning experiences, of course, to become a better doctor, right? And to see if I can really do that as a future career. But as of now, it sounds pretty interesting. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to end this here. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope I taught you a little bit about emergency medicine. I hope you learned something. Uh, if you didn't see my previous videos, I'm going to link them right here and see you in the next video.